Hello, you're watching How to Draw Really Good. I'm your teacher, Oliver, and this is episode six. And today we're going to be drawing a historical character, um, Harry Potter. He's obviously been made famous recently through his films, Harry Potter 1, 2, Harry Potter 3D, and the sequels. So yeah, let's begin. I know in some of these tutorials I'll be repeating myself, but they say repetition is key to learning. So with that in mind, you want to do a large circular-ish head, um, a big eye and a little eye for the 3D effect, and then a C to the side mouth with detailed top teeth and less detailed bottom teeth. Now we're going to do a new technique called cloaking, and that's where you do a large capital T for the body of the character to represent the fact that they're wearing a cloak. Um, you want each of the ends for the sleeves and the bit at the bottom to kind of flare outwards as that is the casual wizarding style at the moment. Now you want to go ahead and choose a dark 3D ash colour for the cloak and then a pale pinkish colour for his skin and a darker pink for the inside the head look. Now here's a problem. Harry Potter's hair is parted down the middle and to draw parted hair is very, very difficult. So I'm going to show you a cheat now. You want to do little spokes coming off from Harry's head in one direction and then the same kind of spokes in the other direction. Now this is called spoking and it gets around the parting effect by, by simplifying it. Now you want to take one of those famous squiggly lines and do a red scar across Harry's face. I'm not sure how he how he got the scar in the films. I think it was a biking accident when he fell off of Hagrid's bike as a child. So I think the moral of the story was don't ride on Hagrid's bike, even if you're a wizard. Now we can go ahead and do some hands on Harry Potter. You want to do one slightly bent in an upward direction and one slightly bent in a downward direction and both of them making grabbing like fists as I'm going to do some props for my Harry Potter. Um, next we'll do the broom. So for the broom you want to do a large pole and then do some bristling effect on the end of the broom. Um, if you think about a toothbrush when you're doing this and kind of get those bristles all moving away in the correct direction. You then want to do the other end of the pole on the opposite side of Harry Potter to show a sense of depth in the image that Harry Potter is sat on the broom. Now I'm going to leave glasses for a future tutorial on facial accessories so um, I don't think it necessarily matters too much as the scar gives it away with the parted fringe. So next we'll do the wand. Now you want to do a large thick black bar in Harry's hand for his wand and then we'll shoot on over to the other hand and we're going to do one of the Quidditch balls. I think this one's called a snitch maybe. Um, you want to do a circular shape and then you want to do two kind of curvy triangles one coming out the top and one coming out the bottom. This is called winging. It's where you add wings to something and then you make it look like it's flying. So that's looking really fantastic now. Um, you want to colour that in a golden colour because the snitch is a golden one. And then you can do some squiggly lines that are kind of curved with a magnetised centre of the snitch um, around the snitch to make it look like it's struggling to get free of Harry's grip. And now for the real magic... We're going to draw some magic. You want to do some squiggly purple lines coming out at the end of the tip of Harry's wand. Um, kind of moving away like a firework. And then go back with some light blue crosses, X's, um, surrounding the squiggly lines. Okay, now I'm going to drop some real knowledge on your ears. And I'm going to teach you how to do scarving and patchwork accessorizing. So you want to go ahead and take a dark red colour and do the outline of a scarf around Harry's neck and then the tasselly dangly bit attached to that, you want to do that as well. And then go ahead and do a bit of a checkerboard pattern on where the badge will be. And now you can take that from looking like an amateur scarf to a professional scarf by taking a yellowy orange gold colour, maybe the same one as the snitch, and then doing extra lines onto the scarf for texturing and then colour in the two squares from the checkerboard that you left previously and you should have a very professional looking 3D Harry Potter. 
So you want to put your name and age on the bottom of that. And then we can turn it into a comic book Harry Potter by putting a speech mark. Um, so I'm going to put mine saying back of the net, which is actually a football slogan. But I'm pretty sure Quidditch players would probably say that as well. There we go. Finished. Now let's have a look how my previous student Neef got along with this tutorial. Okay, um, well he's he's made Harry Potter really old. He's got a snake for a scarf. It looks like Harry Potter's choking. He's not done the scar. He's actually done a kind of earthquake in the top of Harry Potter's head. Uh, he's kind of got the parting almost right, but it, it looks more like Harry Potter's got two tufts of hair poking out of each side. He's done a propeller for an arm. It looks like Harry Potter's smoking instead of doing magic. He's riding on a toothbrush. And he's actually amputated Harry Potter's feet. Also, it looks like he's saying you shall not pass, which is from Lord of a Ring, I think. Oh, Neef, hopefully next time he'll learn how to draw really good. Thank you. Do 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 do